out as I was up at six this morning, as I often am, reading about what happened in South Dakota last night. I was so struck by the fact that you have the governor of the state essentially sponsoring a pep rally for Donald Trump. It was organized by the state's Republican Party, not by the Trump campaign, because as the Times reports, as Trump's campaign has tried to reduce its costs, especially as Trump's legal fees mount, it has welcomed opportunities for the former president to attend large-scale events held by other groups rather than staging its own expensive ones. I wonder what that tells you, both about the state of the Trump campaign. They're going to South Dakota. Nobody's worried about Republicans winning in South Dakota. I mean, this is for him about the optics of seeing his fans and supporters come out and rally behind him. Yeah, it's about the optics of both of these people. It's about yep. the optics of the governor. And it's about the optics of Donald Trump. I mean, in my view, she's not just paying for a rally. She's paying for her own audition. Uh, is what she's doing in the midst of this. I think this, I mean, Donald Trump does have money woes because of all the legal cases against him and the fact that he's using campaign money to pay for all his legal woes. My guess is over over the course of the next year and two months, he's going to have the money necessary to run the campaign. But this does tell you, as you as you look at this, Christy Nome was a sort of credible character uh, for a long period of time. And just like so many other Republicans, she's thrown away her sort of her own personal integrity, her own personal character to sort of just completely go into this audition phase. She wants to be Trump's VP. She expects Donald Trump, and I expect Donald Trump to be the nominee. And it just continues to devolve into this cult-like state of the GOP. Right, instead of actually people coming out and holding him accountable for what he has done. For an enduring the rally, Trump stuck with his old script, painting America as a nation on the cusp of collapse, not for the reasons that he might be responsible for. Trump once again told his supporters last night he is, quote, being indicted for you, you being his supporter. Some of his supporters even wore T-shirts with his mugshot on it. I mean, I... I wonder where that leaves us, and by us, I mean American democracy, as we inch closer to 2024. Well, at least it leaves us in one of the most vulnerable positions I think the country and the republic has been under in probably 200 years. You have to go back to the Civil War, where the very republic itself and the survival of the republic was at stake. But look, I go back to what was mentioned earlier. If you think about what that grand jury did, not even Fonnie Willis, but what the grand jury did, they didn't just choose to indict Donald Trump. In essence, what they're saying was they were indicting the Republican Party as a whole for efforts to overturn the election. It wasn't just Trump alone. And obviously, the, uh, the attorney there did not make the decision to move forward with some of those others, whether it was Kelly Loeffler or Lindsey Graham or others. But the notion that the grand jury, of which there were Republicans on that grand jury, that grand jury was made up of several different folks, made the decision to indict, in essence, the party as a whole. And I think fundamentally, Americans, not the MAGA cult base, but Americans are seeing this. From Trump's perspective, he's also doing, as Matthew touched on earlier, the political necessity steps that he's trying to lock down the nomination. And he basically tell every prospective Republican you're a vice presidential uh, candidate, potentially, but it's going to cost you your endorsement and that, therefore your delegate so he can start stocking mm -hmm. up delegates and further down this nomination. That's what's happening right now. I mean, they're all sitting around dangling pardons as it is, even as they attempt to run against him, theoretically. Lisa, it strikes me that you had Mark Meadows trying to get his case moved to federal court. When you have Republicans who generally love to talk about states' rights and love to rail against federalism actually kind of showing their hand. Yeah, I thought it was fascinating because, as, you're, as you say, this is a conservative legal movement in particular that fetishizes federalism in a sense. But what they have tried to do is remove these cases from the province of state prosecutors and state courts, move them into federal courts. That's the exact opposite of what they've been saying for years. And Judge Steve Jones, in his opinion last night, sort of called them on it. He said that the whole purpose of federal officer removal is to prevent federal uh, to prevent state interference with constitutionally protected federal activities. It's not to allow federal interference with constitutionally protected state actions. Those constitutionally protected state actions here, meaning Fonnie Willis, as an elected district attorney, taking steps to enforce her state's laws with respect to the conduct of elections and others. Right.